I think this episode of Ask Jack D contains the greatest question ever asked on this show before. What excuses am I sick of people making in order to not pursue their dreams? I get frustrated, I get excited, and I ultimately ask you guys, because by the way, the answer is fucking all of them. And at the end of the episode, I ask you guys, what is one challenge or one limitation you've held personally previously that you have overcome Prove to yourself that it was never impossible. And what? how did that change your life going forward? Watch the episode. It's eight minutes in the comments below. Let's have a discussion because I don't believe any challenge can stop any individual from achieving greatness. I believe in human will can always overcome challenge after challenge after challenge. I don't care what it is. I give you 10 case studies for every challenge that you think you might have that will ultimately disprove that you think something is impossible. Try. 28 and I'm trying to shape history Pulling from the sky for some strength to take with me Line up the stars, uh, fly away quickly And push the world forward like a tidal wave hit me I ride the wave swiftly, I fear no man Check my colors made quickly Came from the sky with the light of day in me You grew my own I don't know, you tell me, what are we doing? We're going Okay, <laughs> we're going, we're live We're in Episode 91 Episode 91, welcome to Ask Jack D um, guys, thank you. Thank all of you for continuing to watch this. The questions that are coming through, the views that are getting hit, the comments that are getting hit, the, the dialogue that we're having, the questions that I'm asking you guys, the dialogues we're having after each show is absolutely freaking awesome. So keep them coming. Episode 91, we're taking a question from Twitter. Jackson Peters, what excuses are you sick of people making when they're not pursuing their dreams? Oh. That might be my favorite Ask Jack D question of all time. What excuses are you sick of people making when not pursuing their dreams? Uh, Jackson, all of them. Every single fucking one of them. We've all heard them all, right? And none of them are real, but a lot of people carry these barriers or excuses or these perceived limitations they have of their own abilities and use them as excuses for not even trying, right? Nothing is sadder than dreams going unpursued or visions going unfulfilled because people have excuses around why they shouldn't try. We've all heard them all. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm not intelligent enough. I'm too intelligent or I think too much. Uh, I like socialising too much. I don't like socialising. I'm, I'm too good with people. I don't get the technical side. I'm great with the technical side. I don't get people. Like, the, the excuses that people are able to manufacture to explain why they can't build the courage to pursue their dreams are fucking genius. They would be if they weren't completely transparent, see-through and bullshit. But a lot of people put a lot of effort into constructing excuses as to why they can't do this shit. Here's the thing, it doesn't matter how bad you think you have it. It doesn't matter how bad you think you are at different, uh, different components of being a great person or a great entrepreneur. It doesn't matter. I could show you 10 examples of people who are far worse at you than A, B or C or far older than you or far younger than you or far more intellectually challenged than you or... Um, far more introverted and socially awkward than you that have gone out and changed the world forever or built a substantial business and become incredibly successful. Give me any weakness, any challenge you think you have right now that is stopping you from pursuing your dreams and I will personally hand deliver 10 case studies of people that had that 10 times worse than you did and knocked it out of the fucking park, right? Branson was dyslexic. He reckons he trained himself out of his dyslexia. Nelson Mandela, when he went into politics, said, I remember walking into a room for the first time, people were discussing politics. I felt inadequate and unworthy to be there. My ideas were undeveloped. I couldn't articulate. Um, jobs, right? He didn't wear shoes. He stunk. He only ate apples. He's really bad at personal relationships. Great salesperson, great presenter, not good in terms of personal relationships in personal or professional life. Um, who else is there? Uh... You know, Oprah, really good at the branding stuff. Uh, operationally, probably not, not that great, right? Um, me, uh, it's similar. I, I, I'm great in terms of front end. I'm great in terms of vision. I'm great in terms of strategy. 
ask me to operationalize and I'll show you six people that do it better than me and that's why I employ them, right? Take any person that has achieved significant success in any field, I'm not putting myself in the category of those other individuals just to bring the conversation back to us. Um, take any person that's been successful in any field and they had probably more challenges than everybody else. Um, and often those challenges were their greatest gift because once they were able to prove to themselves that those challenges didn't actually exist, they were able to prove to themselves, they were able to do what they once thought impossible just once, they never again bought into the barriers that they came up with and they imagined all the barriers that other people put in front of them. I can't remember, there's a quote that says, you know, do just once what other people think is impossible and you'll never listen to their barriers ever again. The same is true for your own barriers. Most of the barriers and limitations we create come from us. Do just once what you think is impossible and you'll never consider anything to be impossible again. Um, there's a book by Malcolm Gladwell called David and Goliath and it's about the advantage of disadvantage. It's a study of improbable victory and how, you know, like the CEO and president of Goldman Sachs is also dyslexic. It's one of the biggest investment, most prestigious investment banks in the fucking world. You have to be so unbelievably intelligent to be even in that organization, let alone be the president of it. Gary Cohen is his name. Completely dyslexic, can't really read. I'm not sure about these days, but as he was going up, he couldn't read. It would take him five minutes to read three words. Today he's the president of Goldman Sachs. Right, so again, any challenge you've got, research people that have succeeded with that challenge, that will take the sting out of it, it'll show you that you can be completely successful regardless of what challenges, and ultimately what you end up doing is you train yourself out of your challenges and you hire your weaknesses. So if you don't love operations like I don't, uh, you hire great people operationally. If you don't love finance, then you know when you get to a point where you can bring on a finance people or financing, you hire people who are great with finance. In the beginning, you'll need to do it all, right? It's I need to do it all in the beginning as well. So you suck it up, you get good at it. I my attention to detail went from a one out of ten to a nine out of ten in my first five to six years of business. Like I remember sitting around a table with like an events team. And I wasn't even in doing our events at that point, they were. I go, I think we need to go back to this spreadsheet from six months ago because I think action item 87 uh, you know, hasn't been ticked off at this particular upcoming event. And they'd go back and it actually hadn't, right? So my attention to detail went through the roof. Today, now that I've got team around me and I've sort of gone back to my natural, what comes naturally and intuitive to me, my attention to detail has gone back to a one out of 10, right? So I went from a one out of 10 to a seven out of 10 and back in. Because you have to develop the capabilities required to get you through the stages, to get to a point where you can ultimately hire your weaknesses, don't worry about your weakness anymore, focus completely on your strengths, back that, go all in on that, and then just uh, live in alignment with what your true capabilities are. But again, whatever challenge you think you have is not real. Find 10 people, and I can give them to you, in the comments below, tell me, what challenges do you think you have that are stopping you right now? And, you know, like, it's, some people are actually, do have actually really good big challenges, right? Like, like, I've just had, you know, hypothetically, I've just had my, both my parents pass away, or whatever the case may be, right? Really bad shit in life happens. I'm not discounting that for a second. What I'm saying is I could show you 10 people who lost their whole family and went on to build a life that was fulfilling and, and achieved a legacy that was really important to them, right? So if you want, give me your challenges in the comments below and I'll give you examples of people who've overcome those challenges. What I would prefer you to do in the comments below is give me what challenge you once thought you actually had. One limitation you once thought was real that you proved to yourself that it wasn't. And how did that shift in your perspective and your paradigm change the way you approach life? One challenge or limitation you thought was real, you proved to yourself that it wasn't, and how did it shift your life from there onwards? In the comments below, guys, I'm genuinely interested in this, because this is ultimately like what entrepreneurs live for, right? Improbable victory, overcoming challenges. The number one thing that will determine, you want to speak to someone, you want to be able to gauge their level of uh, future success before they've made it, look at it, how much self-belief do they have? Because you take someone who's genuinely great, who's genuinely, genuinely a great entrepreneur, and self-belief can be built, it can be manufactured, it can be developed. Um, so you don't need to be born with it, I don't think. Um, see, how much of that do, does this individual have? That will be your largest barometer as to 
how successful that individual is going to be, become. You need to have a delusional level of self-confidence in order to do something great. In the comments below, when have you proven your limitations wrong and how did it change your life forever? Sexualized a wish that I dreamed as a kid. Yeah. Cause I'm lighting up.